All right, this is going to be a pretty basic tutorial on how to skin a tank. I'm just going to give you one or two ways to go about it. Um, I've stripped all the uh, default skins out of the game, and I'm going to upload those as a separate file. That way you can start with those. Um, this is the Russian SU-152. It's just the regular DDS file. Um, what you have is your DDS, which is the picture, um, your normal map, and your shine map. That's what we're going to concentrate on. This is the crash skin. Um, this I don't know, and this I don't know. They're new to 8.0, so it's probably why the older skins are crashing and everything. But all I'm doing is opening this one here, just the regular DDS. All right, so this is what it is. Um, now you can just dump a, a skin or dump a texture on here and just say it's camouflaged. It looked kind of stupid. Um, you want some of the stuff to be uncamouflaged. I'm going to stick with the fuel barrels, um, just so you can see a difference in something. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll take the uh, square tool here to select. Now this isn't going to be pretty. It's just a quick example. These should be the fuel barrels, if I remember correctly. All right, now I'm just going to uh, layer via copy. Okay, so we have those. So you made another layer with those on it. I'll show you why that's important here in a second. Now you want the fuel barrel ends, which I believe are right here. They kind of place stuff everywhere. I believe that's going to be like the end caps there. Uh, so what I do is I want to change this to round. And I'm going to go with 66 by 66 just to see what happens. It's just about right. Now see, if I have a separate layer, not the background, a separate layer highlighted, I can drag that where I want. Okay, uh, that should be pretty close. Let's see. Yeah, it's good enough for me. Uh, just for the example. But to actually cut it out, I need to go to the background layer because that's telling the computer that that's on the background. You should know that, so I'll just be quiet. So you go to edit, or sorry, back to the selection tool, right click, and do another layer via copy. Okay. Now, if you're going to do that for uh, anything that you don't want to cover with this camouflage layer, okay? Now that got moved, so what I want to do is do the arrow, do that. Line that back up. I must have bumped it somewhere. There we go. All right. So now I have the two things that I don't want camouflaged. So now I'm going to create another layer. New layer. It's going to be the size of all this. And I want to put that underneath those but above the background. Okay. Now turn off the background so you can see just the new layer of nothing. Okay. It's transparent. Now you need to find camouflage pattern, whatever one you like. I just opened one up on the, uh, I did a search on the internet and I found one that was pretty big. Let's see here. Now the this right here, the size you're going to need is 2048 by 2048. Okay, this one was 1024 by 1024. I stretched it. I went to image, image size, and changed. See, well, it's actually 1200 by 1200, so let's just change it again. 2048, 2048. Okay, so now it's the new size. If you're in Photoshop, Control A to outline everything, Control C to copy it. Now you go back to that layer you made that was blank. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it in there, but then I'm going to go to the layer property here and I'm going to make it an overlay. That way when I add the tank back in, see how I put it on the tank? But another thing I want to do, so I'll get rid of the camouflage layer. I don't want to keep the coloration that this has here, the green. I want to kind of make it grayed out. So with just the background selected, I'm going to go to Image. Oops, Mode. Grayscale. Oh, don't flatten. Ah, uh, that's what I did wrong. I apologize. 
background selected. There we go. Image adjustments, black and white. There we go. Now that gives me a black and white version, but it's a little too dark. So I want to go to image adjustments, brightness, because I want to be able to see the details of the tank. I don't want to lose those. I actually get about plus 60. Because now it'll give me all the gears and everything again, all the grills that I wanted to use. Okay. So now when I put the camouflage back on, see how it shines through a little bit more? But you can actually see the tank details. And then I'll put the... Now I showed that layer. Since it's above the background, you can see it. Same with the fuel tanks, so they're not touched. Um, that's pretty much it. I've just added camouflage to the entire tank, except for the areas that I didn't want to do, which very click, uh, quickly were just the uh, fuel tanks. At least I think they were the fuel tanks. You'll have to play around to see what's what. Some self is, some stuff is selfly, or, uh, pretty much self-explanatory, and some stuff isn't. Now remember, this is just the DDS. So I want to go to Layer, Flatten Image, SU-152, File, Save. Now if you haven't seen the other tutorial, this is the saving version of the NVIDIA. You want to go to Normal Map Settings, make sure you have um, Normalize Set, but also DXT5, Interpolated Alpha, if I pronounce that correctly, and uh, Generate MIPS. Okay. This and this really aren't important until you go to the normal mass setting, which I'll show you here in a minute. Okay, so this, all this did was just change how it looks color wise and how it's going to spread out. Now we need to do what's called a shine map. Um, what the shine map does is when it's in the garage, it, it tells the lighting what's going to shine and how bright. Okay, so what I need to do to this whole thing is I need to go to image, adjustments, black and white. Um, we'll do mine a little bit darker. Okay, that's it. That's a shine map. As a matter of fact, let's let's make it shiny. Let's go to adjustments. Go to brightness and contrast. Let's get some shine going on here. Okay, looks shiny enough. Um, the brighter the area, the more shine it's going to have. The darker, more it's going to absorb the light. Um, I'm still learning as I go. Like I said, this I'm self-taught at this, so. This is what I found to be the easiest, quickest. It gives you actually a decent result. So you're going to file, save as, 152. Now this is the shine map, so it's the SM. Okay. Save, yes, and save. On those NVIDIA panels, once you set the settings, they'll stay that way. So you give that a second to, share, or to a saver. Okay. Now the last piece we need to do is the normal map. Now what that does is it gives um, gives your texture depth. It's kind of like a 3D image, so it doesn't look like you just spray painted it on there. It makes the paint look like it has thickness. Um, if you've seen the other tutorial, you got a better idea, but we'll do one here too. So for that one, you need to go to Filter, and you'll see your NVIDIA tools. Now this is the other panel that this one gives you. Okay, I use Invert Y, 5x5. These three I leave checked. Er, there you go. Max RGB and height. All right. Now when you hit OK, you're going to get a funky bluish file. You can kind of see the depth on it now, but it's not quite what I want. So I want to go to the layers property over here. You see the layers background. I'm going to duplicate layer. And once again, our friend is overlay. It kind of stacks them, get a little bit more depth. I want to do it one more time. When you're doing details for a hanger, you can go a little crazy because it's supposed to have some depth, but you don't want too much of the tank depth jumping out of you because then it doesn't look like polished metal with paint on it. It kind of looks like somebody chiseled your tank. Um, I still get it wrong sometimes and look really funky. So do as many layers as you need. You'll figure it out. Um, now you go to Layer, Flatten Image. Okay. Now File. Save as. Now you're going to save this one as your normal map. Um, this is where the normalized part comes in. Uh, the way it was explained to me on another tutorial was that when you hit normalize, it brings the RGB back. I could probably be 100% wrong on that, but it seems to work, so I'm going to stick with that. Okay, now you've just taken your basic 
green SU-152 and uh, turned it into a giant woodland maple oak leaf covered tank. Now the only thing I didn't cover is sizing your camouflage or sizing your textures. I just used a giant texture as the first one I found. So I'm going to have like a four and a half foot oak leaf on the top of this tank. Obviously you'd want to take that giant texture, shrink it down and kind of make a pattern out of it on that 24 or 2048 by 2048 square. You wouldn't want this giant oak leaf right here on the top of your tank. You'd want, you know, a thousand little ones. That's just as far as playing around with sizing the texture. Um, maybe I'll make a tutorial on that one day, but who knows. So now we're going to go into the game here. I know you can't see this. I apologize. Give me one second. I forgot to do this. Here we go. Okay. This is it beforehand. Okay. So let's switch to another tank real quick. And then we'll go back to... My SU-152, which should now be changed. Okay, so now there you go. And those were the fuel tanks. Awesome. So you have the fuel tanks here that are untouched. And you have the giant oak leaf encrusted SU-152. And if we get a little closer here, you can see the depth of the texture. It, it looks like it's something that's spackled onto the tank. Uh, it looks like I put maybe one layer of texture too much on there. But uh, you'll play with it. You'll get your dimensions and how it looks. I kind of like the looks of the grooves in the metal. Like they didn't quite have time to sand it. It is a Russian war tank after all. See the welds on it. But uh, there you go. That's my quick and dirty tutorial on how to skin a tank. All right, guys. Thanks.